So welcome everyone to, to join. And today, as usual, I will present the product news. And then for the main topic, uh, Ryan uh, will present how to create uh, VM images on vSphere using Packer. So me, um, Stefan Estegracias, I'm working as DevSecOps facilitator coach and working as talent and organizational development at Data Essential, a Luxembourgish consulting company. Uh, you can join me with a Sistigra uh, handle on Twitter or, or LinkedIn, or you can direct, send a direct message on Meetup if you want to share something with me. And uh, if you want to, to tweet about this meetup, uh, I suggest you to do so with following tags, the hashtag Luxembourg hug and HashiCorp handle. So let's start with some latest product news on HashiCorp uh, product. Uh, after the session, I will send you a message in the uh, meetup with the links related to all the product news uh, I will share with you for further information. So let's start with Terraform. So Terraform automates in your infrastructure. So provision change and version resource on any environment. So the first new features for Terraform 1.1 uh, to improve the refactoring of your code, uh, it implements a new statement called moved that replaces the, Terra, the Terraform state MV uh, command usually. And Terraform Cloud CLI implement now three core workflows. So UI or VCS driver uh, driven workflow, CLI driven workflow, and API driven workflow. Each of these workflows represents ways that user trigger and manage their runs. Lastly, cloud development kit for Terraform CDK that support TypeScript, Python, Java, C Sharp, and Go to manage your resources instead of using directly the HCL language. The 0.9 release enables cross stack references and uh, improve the generated resources for providers and modules. So let's move on Packer. Packer, so Packer automates the build of your machine images. So for the, the 1.7 branch, um, this, this 1.7 branch enable the support of HCL2 files for as a stable definition to build images and implements template function only for HCL2 uh, language. Uh, one main uh, important things to, to know about Packer for this branch is that the provisioner plugin will be removed from outside the Packer source tree. That means that uh, in the next version, the 1.8, a user will have to use Packer init command to install this plugin. Like you know, if you use it as Terraform init, it's the, the same principle. Lastly, uh, Ashikorp. Uh, developed HCP Packer, so is a cross cloud image gallery for Packer. So it, it has been released in beta for now. And it, 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 it uses metadata to track machine images, iteration of your images, and as well, the build associated with them. So you can see how your um, image are uh, used in your cloud. So next, uh, Consul. For those that don't know what Consul is, Consul uses service identity and with automated networking for securely connect application running in any environment. It implements key value store, uh, service discovery, MTLS, service mesh, automated infrastructure change, etc. So the main things that happen in Consul 1.11 is the new tool named Consul-KAS-CLI that is uh, enable to you to quickly install and interact with Consul on Kubernetes. It enables user to set HashiCorp uh, Vault as a native secret backend instead of using Kubernetes secrets. This provides a more comprehensive way for zero trust networking solution when you are using Consul service mesh on Kubernetes. And lastly, multi-tenancy with admin partition enables multiple Kubernetes clusters on VM from different tenants to share a single cons console control plane. So this, this feature is only available in enterprise uh, version. Concerning Vault, so Vault uh, secure, store, and tightly control access to token, password, certificate, and impression key for protecting secrets or other sensitive data. 
In Vault 1.9, uh, Vault 1.9 can now act as an OIDC provider itself, allowing application uh, to leverage uh, pre-existing Vault identities for delegating authentication and authorization into their application. For example, uh, one product from Ashicorp, Ashicorp uh, Boundary, is using Vault as an OIDC provider to delegate authentication and authorization to connect on the host through uh, Boundary. Vault 1.9 adds support as well for advanced encoding and decoding template customization for data. Uh, so this one is for enterprise version and transparent data encryption for Microsoft SQL Server to perform real-time data encryption log file uh, encryption, description, and transparently for the end user uh, application. And lastly, in addition to support uh, both AWS and Azure Key Vault, um, now the key management uh, secret engine uh, for uh, Vault is available for Google Cloud KMS. That means this feature lets you to use Vault to manage the cloud uh, secrets, so creating, uh, reading, uploading, or rotating keys as well as an enterprise uh, features. So boundary, let's move on. Boundary is an identity-based access for zero trust security. So it enable access any system from anywhere based only on user identity. So it's a core module for zero trust uh, networking uh, access. Boundary 0.7 uh, dynamically connects any service registry from AWS and Azure that enable uh, all host and host catalog from this cloud uh, environment to be always up to date inside the boundary uh, side. Uh, this version implements as well an initial support for partner plugin via uh, Go plugin uh, module. Managed group are now automatically populated using an administrator uh, defined uh, filter and user may now filter out uh, host method and session resources in the admin console and in the boundary desktop uh, application. Now we move on Nomad. So Nomad uh, is a simple and flexible scheduler for, and workload orchestrator to deploy and manage container and non-containers application across on-prem and cloud at scale. So the 1.2 release introduce a new type of jobs named, uh, his name is Sysbatch, that means system batch. So these jobs are used for one-off cluster-wide short-lived tasks, like a backup or uh, collecting data, or whatever you want to do one-off on all your uh, nodes in uh, Nomad. Then the UI stanza uh, has been created to configure the Nomad agent web UI to specify whether you want to see, uh, to enable or not the web UI for Nomad and integrate uh, the console and vote web UI directly in Nomad uh, UI by, uh, by putting uh, the, the URL of both of them. Lastly, uh, Nomad Pack, so is a preview, uh, tech preview uh, that enable the creation of a package, so it's a package manager for Nomad that makes it easy to define reusable application deployments. Waypoint, so this is quite uh, is a, new, a new product. And now we have Twitch 0 0.7 uh, release and Waypoint allow developers to deploy, manage, and observe their applications through a, consist a consistent, oh, sorry, consistent abstraction of the underlying infrastructure. So whatever your infrastructure and the, the target, it could be Kubernetes, Nomad, or, or other platform, you can uh, deploy and manage your application and observe it uh, with that tool. So what, what are new in this uh, version? Uh, new UX it, items include a drop-down for environment selection and timeline associated with building, deployment, and release information. And the Waypoint CLI now uh, supports scripting and continuous integration lifecycle using triggers. So you can integrate easily uh, Way, uh, Way, Waypoint CLI inside your CI/CD pipeline. And in the Waypoint uh, HCL file, now can fetch data from external systems such as HashiCorp Vault, HashiCorp uh, uh, Terraform Cloud, Kubernetes Config Maps, and more. And now teams can scope uh, plugin configuration to target a spe specific workspace. So workspace are quite the same 
type of Terraform, it, it, you can split your, your infrastructure in workspaces. Here, for instance, you can uh, define uh, Docker as a platform for development and Kubernetes for production, for instance. And last but not least, it was its oldest product from MashiCorp, uh, Vagrant. Uh, the Vagrant leveraged a declarative configuration file which describe all your software requirements, packages, operation system configuration, user, and more. And in the latest version, it implements improvement and bug fix. And something important to know that in the next version, Vagrant 3.0, it uh, will be implemented only in Go instead of Ruby. And Vagrant file will support HCL declaration and data structure uh, as other uh, ASICOR products. So that means in the journey of 3.0, uh, ASHICorp uh, decided to release uh, multiple versions. The, the first one, the 2.3, will be released with initial alpha version of Go-based implementation for experimentation. And the Vagrant command, command line, uh, command, uh, command executable, will continue to run with the Ruby-based implementation. In the 2.4 release, uh, the new Go implementation will be the primary executable, and it will include a migration command, which will uh, import existing data from your Vagrant box and project directory. And finally, the Vagrant 3.0 will release only the Go-based implementation. So um, I, will, I will share with you all the link regarding all this news uh, in, in the, at the end of this session in the meetup uh, mailing. Uh, now, uh, Let's move on to the main topic of the day and feel free to ask questions in the chat if you have some uh, and we'll leave the, the screen to, to Ryan. So Ryan, the screen is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Share my screen. And Can you guys see my screen okay? Yep. Awesome, cool. Well, let's get, get started. So, um, hey, my name's Ryan Johnson. Um, I'm a uh, staff to solutions architect uh, over at VMware um, in our engineering teams. And um, I, I primarily focus on on the VMware validated uh, VMware Valley designs in the past, um, I was one of the architect architects authors of those designs. If you're familiar with those designs, if you're a vSphere user, um, and using the the basically all of the VMware private cloud solutions, um, I also one of the primary architects for VMware Cloud Foundation, and most notably late, lately, I've been working on the um, evolution of the VMware Valley designs to the VMware Valley solutions and how those inter interoperate with uh, VMware Cloud Foundation. And over, you know, kind of the, 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 the in all my contact information, if you guys want to get in touch with me, you know, my contact information is at the bottom, take a screenshot, um, you know, link up with me. I'm happy to, you know, to to have conversations. A couple of folks on here, I, I've, I, I know, <laughs> which is nice to see. Um, so a couple of years ago, I was working on on learning Terraform. I was kind of a little late late to the game and learning learning Terraform and um, from HashiCorp. And uh, when I got kind of done, kind of getting my you know my feet wet on that, I said, "What is this Packer thing?" And you know, unbeknownst to me, I'd heard heard about Packer, but I never had used it before. Um, but it actually f fit a need for me and in order the project I was working on was really around virtualized automation. And um, I always needed, you know, kind of golden image builds, you know, builds of, of machine images that I could use, whether it's using VMware guest customizations or cloud and knit, et cetera, to build workloads and, 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 dem and demo and, and stress test environments. And uh, lo and behold, you know, Packer has been around for a long time. Um, and what I actually like to call, it's kind of that unsung hero of the internet, because you think about, you know, uh, building, you know, these, these golden machine images, whether you're using it on a private cloud or you're looking at like public cloud AMIs um, on, on AWS or whatever, GCP, Azure, et cetera, and other clouds, um, 
people need a way to build these, these, these solid images that can be, you know, provision, they can make changes to them, they can, you know, really keep them up to update, put any specialized tools or configurations, um, maybe for compliance reasons, etc, without having to do it the the old traditional click by click uh, method right. Um, which, uh, frankly, a lot of customers still still do, and, and well, I think it's important they start looking at um, tools like like Packer. And so the project actually I was I was working on just to kind of to to set context was the VMware VMware validated solutions, right? And I happened to be working on this private cloud uh, automation solution, and um, I was doing Terraform in there, but again, I needed I needed to have gold builds. So in in light, you know, in Around the Thanksgiving in the U.S. of 2020, I started kind of banging around trying to trying to uh, get something working, and uh, I created a pro I created a project, um, and that project at the time, uh, just to share share with you kind of the history as we get into this, was a was one called Packer vSphere. So if you ever see rainpole rainpole slash Packer vSphere, this was the project that that initiated uh, from that you know, learning uh, exercise of mine. And my goal was number one, to, 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 to learn Packer, but also be able to use Packer in my project um, with vRealize Automation. I was using things like the vSphere content library quite a bit. Um, I needed something that worked for there. I needed various Im various images uh, to demonstrate whether it's different very flavors of Linux, different flavors of Windows, right? Um, whether it's core, standard, or desktop, enterprise, I, I needed needed those images, and so I started started building this project. And over time, learning learning you know the deeper secrets of of how to use how to use it. And at the same time, you know I was very familiar with Terraform and and the use of HCL because. Um, Everyone I, I had seen was was still using Packer with JSON, um, and experimental support for had had just kind of been released for for uh, HCL HCL and and Packer, and so I, I quickly jumped on that and said I'm going to just go the HCL route because I understand that uh, Terraform makes makes a lot more sense. I, I don't <laughs> I, I use JSON only when I have don't have to for other other you know type type of types of reasons, and and I, and I built this project and. Um, that was again in like late, 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 late 20, late 2020. A um, couple months later, a couple months later, I had done a couple, couple releases of that pro project. And then uh, I hear from, I hear from Stefan here um, who had great ideas and just really kind of opened my eyes to some, some ideas and things I could add to it. And, and begin, and he became one of the contributors to the project um and i'll share kind of keep i'll share how this evolved and, and and where we are today well stefan added lots of ideas and we back and forth and we got connected on on uh, code.vmware.com on the slack channel which if if you are a member of the code.vmware.com slack channel i would encourage you to join 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 we talk about the vSphere products we talk about packer vSphere every any integrations and that's kind of how we communicate but we came up with some some great um enhancements to the pro project and how we can you know better enable delivery of creating these Im images and so what has happened um, since, since then is this project has, has evolved and it's now an official VMware open source. So we, VMware has an open source, open source community, but now this project is actually now an officially sponsored VMware uh, open source project. Uh, you can find it at VMware, uh, get on GitHub at VMware samples slash Packer examples for vSphere. Um, and I'll walk through, you know, kind of the, the, the goals of the project now. Um, this project uses uh, Packer. Uses a, I try to keep it as updated as possible with the latest version of Packer, and um, specifically using the Packer build builder for vSphere, uh, for VMware vSphere. Um, specifically, the builder of vSphere dash ISO is the builder that's used in this project, um, and so for that, just kind of level set. That's kind of what it is. Uh, with the goal to build image. So I'm going to kind of walk through and do a couple of demos to show you guys actually what it does. Uh, before the, I do that, um, are there any questions before we kind of jump into the demo and a kind of a code walkthrough? Okay. No question for so far. Perfect. So just to kind of show you guys real quickly, this is this is my my vSphere environment. Very basic is a test bed that I that I that I have in my my environment. I have a Dell Power Edge server that sits kind of right behind me over here that I use for a lot of testing, Terraform, Cloud Foundation, Packer, etc. I keep it pretty bare bones when um 
when I'm when I'm doing doing testing. It's uh, vSphere 7.0 um, 7.0 update 3C. So the late, the the very late the very latest version. It just happens to be one one host here. Um, but we're going to kind of show, show you how, how this works. And then you see I have a, a, a packer packer box here. So as we jump in here, I want to kind of show you uh, the code, right? So this is just um, in, in Visual Studio code here. Um, this project basically is the intent is um, to build a couple different um, variations of Linux and and when Windows uh, machine images. And it does all these, whether it's VMware folks. And I'm really kind of focused on, you know, the uh, things that have been released, right? Um, and slowly over time to kind of take things that are maybe people aren't using as much to kind of roll those out, but focus on, you know, Linux distributions of, you know, uh, Photon, Ubuntu server 20, 2004, you'll see 2204 at some point, 18, uh, Rail 8, 8 and 7, um, Alma and Rocky were requested by the community that were actually using this project because of the, some changes happened with CentOS and CentOS Stream coming to bear. Um, and so we have CentOS uh, Stream uh, eight and 8 and 7. Uh, Windows, we got to have Windows in there. So we got 22, 19, 16 is still there, even though it's, uh, it's out of general support. Both standard uh, and enterprise, we also support desktop experience and building core, core images here. And Windows 10 and 11. Um, I previously had Windows 11 and what I called experimental support. Um, but now um, with the latest version of uh, 1.7.9, uh, which now supports VTPM or the virtual uh, trust, uh, trusted, oh God, <laughs> privacy module. I can't think of the, the, the exact name. For, for, for supports TPM. We can now actually build that into an image on build, and I'll show I'll show you that show you that. Um, and the pr project, um, you know, basically what you need you need uh, have Packer 1.7. Um, very simple. It's very simple to install. Um, like if you're on a Mac, you can do it from Brew. Uh, the Packer plugin uh, for vSphere gets automatically instantiated when you do run a Packer init, or you actually run the the tool that we uh, the the build script that I have, which I'll show you guys in a, in a few moments. And you use the Packer plugin for Windows updates. This gives us the ability for Windows images to actually uh, at the end. It's a community plugin uh, or pr provisioner that actually gives you ability to install updates into the Windows images when you build them. Um, my testing, I do my testing mostly on, on Mac. I'm a Mac guy. Uh, Big Sur and Monterey is what I've tested on. Uh, I know Alan, who's who's on the call, who's a, a buddy of mine. He does a lot of his on, on, on Windows. So it does work on Windows, um, and he's done that. And I've done testing on Ubuntu. All right, and so all the details on, on the require on the requirements are here. I try to be very um, particular and, and document, uh, sometimes over document the, the, the requirements. Um, I, I hate going to like open source project and it's like, you know, two paragraphs and that's it. I try to document everything as, as best as possible in, in the readme. In the future, I would like to kind of clean this up so it's a little more like a, you know, like a, uh, like a Hugo based um, project um, page where you can get half more documentation, but I don't want to regurgitate, you know, the Packer, the Packer documentation. I want to really kind of focus on, on the needs of this project, right? Uh, vSphere 7 uh, update two or later or VMware Cloud Foundation 4.2 or later. And I walk through the process of actually, you know, how, how to get how to get started. I just want to pop over to my, my the presentation here. And like I mentioned, very basic stuff. Having 1.7.9 in your system. Uh, I do have you have use of Terraform in here. So at least 1.1.0 or greater, 114 being the latest, as, as Stefan said. Uh, and the system that you're doing the build from to have Ansible um, 2.9 or later, I think 2.9 uh, coming out. Um, so the current version um, available is uh, two, uh, 2201, right? So that's for the year 20, uh, 2022 and, and, and Jan January. And if you want to get access to the project, you can get, visit the GitHub site, uh, or you can just do a Git clone and pull pull down the latest the latest from main. The latest version, if you download, is 2201, like I said. Um, definitely check out the README. It's very, it's very, you know, fork it, customize this as you need, as you need to. It's do whatever you need to. I would love contributions. I would love people to to join to join in and, and assist with it. Once you um, read the README and you make the necessary cha changes, in which the README will walk you directly walk you directly through, um, and what we can co cover some of that. Um, there's a build script. 
uh, and this build script uh, that you'll you'll run run um, from the you can run or you can run from the command line. You can launch um, launch the build script. It will pop up and give you a menu, uh, you know very rudimentary menu structure. This is an old 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 screenshot here, and you can pick one of the images that you want to deploy, and away it will go and build that image on your infrastructure. And I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. If you want to maybe use environmental variables, or you want to do it. Um, through a CIDC pipeline, maybe call it through Vim or CodeStream or Jenkins, right? You could create it so it actually calls directly the, the commands you need in order to run a build, and you can do it that way too. The build script is really just kind of this, you know, um, facade in front, in, in front of these commands. It helps you init, just makes it a little easier for you to just kind of push a button and it will build, build your image magically in the background, okay? That's all I have for slides. And so what I want to actually do is actually uh, give you a demonstration, give me a demonstration of it actually working. Um, and then we'll actually jump in and actually kind of look through the code. So in the meantime, any questions, Stefan? No question. All right. So I'm going to SSH over into my, my Packer host here that I have in my, in my infrastructure. We'll clear this. Uh, Could you zoom a little, a little bit uh, your, your phone, please? Okay. That better? Yes, the better. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I'll CD over into my Packer directory and I'll just do an analysis on that guy and I can see everything from the everything is, is in there. Now, um, one thing I did not mention and I'll, I'll show you um, there's also a config, a config uh, script. And this is actually the, the brainchild of, of Stefan here. I can actually run this. Uh, the, the, the dot the dot config the dot configs um, file and what that actually will do is in, inside of uh, if I go to inside of builds right uh, and ls there the, you'll see these dot example files right build dot pkvars hcl dot example right and I have pre populated so let me just cat the the cat the build file for example a lot of different variables these are all kind of predefined can variables right don't use the same ssh ssh keys and password encrypted passwords i i use at all please don't um i <laughs> do not do that um but this is just an example kind of to kind of get you get you started right so don't use these but usernames passwords uh and bill keys it's just a very basic piece to get you started but what we can do with that config it will actually go in there and copy uh copy um those examples over into a config directory or directory that you choose um and you can then uh, as you're doing a build you can actually pass that directory uh into the build script and it'll allow you to say say I me mean, i have like you know a us east one and us east you know two i can run builds against i either of those by by changing the config parameter so check out the config that's one of the first steps you have to do in order to kind of get things uh, cop copied over. Let me uh, back back up here a little bit, and what we're going to do is just simply run the build the build the the build script, uh, script so you can kind of see what it looks like. All right. So here I got Packer builds, right? I can see you know the the, the fancy bubble text at the top here and my my selection. So let's be more Photon OS, etc., um, Windows and what have you. So first thing I want to do just kind of show you, you know, because it only takes like two three minutes for it to work. Um, we're going to select uh, VMware Photon OS four. This actually happens to be, uh, we just hit yes. I want to go build that, and it's going to go off and start bu building this. Now if I pop over to um, here and hit a little refresh. Sometimes it's a little slow on my right. I can see that Linux Photon 04 is booting up, right? I can look here and I can see these uh, USB USB inputs here. That's actually the keys being pressed um, through keys being pressed here to actually initiate the um, the boot sequence. So it's actually passing those key, those keys. And what's happening now is the image is basically kickstarting, and it's kickstarting. If you look here, it's kickstarting over HTTP. Now, by default, this project uses H, uh, HTTP kickstart. But um, in working with uh, Stefan, he had a brilliant, brilliant idea. And when I said, well, there's other ways to kickstart. We'll talk about that in just, just a minute as we'll go through. Photon is really super fast. It only takes a couple moments for it to boot up, but it kickstarted over HTTP from my Packer VM. And now at this point, it's going to reboot. And once it gets an IP address, uh, Packer is going to connect to it and run a post provision. And so it's going to run some scripts, some it's going to connect to connect to it, uh, running my default Ansible baseline. Um, and we'll see that run in just a set, run in just a moment. So let's sit here and we can wait for this 
to come online. And once it gets that IP uh, first IP address, it's going to customize that customize that image. And ooh, all right, connected there. All right, so there it is. It's 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 up. We're just waiting for it to get an IP address, which when VMware Tools kicks in, it should be. Now I want to show you here down here in the notes. I also throw in a version, right? You see the naming convention that I have, like a V twenty two hundred two, because it's we're in February now. So it automatically you can change this naming convention if you want. But I tack on the V twenty two hundred two, and you'll see, you know, which version of HashiCorp it was built with, the build date, the build version. You can see we now have we now have an IP address here of uh, fourteen one ninety two. Great. I'll pop over here. I can see that our uh, Packers are already connected, and it's starting to run an Ansible playbook. Book. The playbook I'm actually pulling here is actually just a baseline, my first initial baseline playbook. And I, I blame Alan here, who I think he balanced still on the call. Um, he kind of got me into thinking about, you know, how to use Ansible because I was using, a, I'm using a lot of um, shell scripts. And I really kind of wanted to kind of change those things up to use more infrastructure as code and get, kind of get out just these shell scripts. And the first piece was actually creating this base, baseline playbook. Um, I have initiative. I'm trying to work on doing ones for configuring and, and so forth. But um, right now, I haven't my initial, my initial foray is just kind of doing things like, you know, the patching and updating. Now, it's past, past doing all the playbook pieces. And what you can see here is where it actually um, starts calling uh, uh, my provisioner scripts, right? So I'm actually passing a photon as a, a bash script here. And what you'll see is anything that I'm actually running inside uh, on the script, I'm at, you'll see in my scripts, I'm actually denoting with these, uh, the, these carrots here. So you actually see uh, each of my runs here have this, this carrot with what, what is actually being done. If there's any sensitive variables, things like usernames or passwords or keys or anything like that, it's being mass as sensitive. So you're not going to see that come through the screen, come through the, come through the screen there and, you know, goes through and cleans up the image. And it will, at the end of it, it will import that VM, that, that VMDK, uh, sorry, import that OVF image uh, into my content library. So today I should see there should be a new image for 2202 for Photon in my content library. All right, so I'll pop over to vSphere, go take a look at my content library here. And I see I have a Photon 20, 2201 and right underneath it is 2202. And I can tell you that's the first version. It should be the first, well, the, the first version, should be the first version. Um, I don't think I actually read. No, I did run one today. Sorry, I did run one. So that's the third version um, of, of that template. One of the nice pieces about this is I could run, you know, five more of these today, right, and do a build. When using the content library, uh, Packer is actually going to send it up to the content library and say, I have a new version and just replace that exact that, that image with that, replace that uh, OVF with a new version and not change the name, which is super beneficial if you're using things like vRealize Automation, because vRealize Automation does things like uh, image mapping and is looking for that name, right? Um, it's looking for that name of tw like 2202 and expects that name. And I can just add a new version without actually having to re reconfigure VRA, right? And so now I have an, I have an image, image there. And just kind of show you um, how, how things work, I have a Ubuntu image here. Um, I can actually go deploy one from the, one of these that I built earlier. So if I look at uh, this image here, uh, where is it? So I built this image, 2201 Ubuntu. I built this a few a few days back using the same using the same version. Just want to quickly show you an example while we're sitting here um, of actually deploying that and testing one of those images um, deployed through Terraform. Right. So here we are. Um, I've got a Terraform plan here, and the image that it's going to use is that Ubuntu 2201. Right, I've got a just a basic configuration to say, hey, go deploy, you know, a VM from the content library, right? Find the name, it's an OVF, and go and deploy. It's going to be a Ubuntu image, right? And I pass the variables that I need, pull the image from the content library, but I also want to, it's the Cloud Init based image. So I want to use Cloud Init in order to conf configure and customize it. So I can pass my, my user data and my, um, my VM data. Um, so sorry, my metadata. So this one says cloud VM right now. I'm going to call it, you know, call it something else. Let's call it, let's call it a hug, right? We'll call the, we'll call the VM name hug. Let me save this guy, right? I'm going to clear this and I want to do a Terraform init. 
we'll initialize this uh, this point th this here, and then I'll just say you know because everybody should just do apply auto approve. Don't do that. Um, you'll see the plan the plan fire up, and we'll start the point of VM. If I pass over to um, vSphere real quickly, you can see that it's fetching a, fetching that image from the content library at this point. I pop over this guy. And there is my image, right? VM. Uh, now this is the VM, the VM name. So if I look over here into my uh, Terraform VARs example, I can see I wanted the VM name to be Ubuntu Cloud Init, right? But when it comes up, um, it's going to pull that from the content library. Let's just look at anything that's running. It's going to pull that up and it's going to boot it up and it's going to actually use Cloud Init. It's going to use that user data and that metadata in order to configure it. And that's because that that Ubuntu image was configured through Packer to use Cloud Init, especially with anything Ubuntu, Ubuntu related. While that's coming up, I'm going to kind of go through a little bit of some of the some of the fun that I'm doing with um, doing with with Packer here uh, that you probably will not see in a lot of a lot of uh, other projects. All right. So this is the structure, right? The build SH, config SH. There's also this new new file. I don't think I told Stefan about this one. Set environmental vars. You can actually run this if you don't want to use. Uh, if you do not want to use, have your passwords and such in clear text um, in a config directory, which I totally understand. You can actually run the set in uh, set environmental variables, and it will actually walk through and ask you for all the environmentals and save that to save that save that to your environment, so you can actually run um, from the command line, run the packer, run the packer builds. Uh, and not have to keep that 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 data um, local, which is great if you're running like a CI/CD pipeline, right? Let's keep keep it out. I haven't integrated this into Vault yet because not everyone has it. Um, it's it is an interest um, to me to do so. If you look at the um, the layout of the directory structure, um, I try to keep things as simple as possible. You'll see a Linux folder, you'll see a Windows folder, right? And under there, you'll see each of the each of the, uh, the operating systems that are the main operating systems that we'll we'll look at. So let's say, for example, I want to look at a, a Photon, right? So I'll see there's a Photon 4 directory there. If I look at CentOS, I'll see there's an 8, 8, 8, uh, sorry, 7, 8, and 8 stream, right? And under there, you'll see um, things like my, my, my configuration, right? Uh, this is the exact configuration for that build. Any variables that I want to pass into that, into that build uh, and the instantiating the definitions for those variables. So just taking a look at maybe, you know, uh, CentOS stream here, um, we can look at this this, defin this definition, right? We're using 1.7.9, right? We're gonna initialize that. And once you when you look through this, you'll notice there's very, very few locations, if at all, where I put anything uh, that's like static text, right? This is pretty much the only location you'll find any static text in the, in the, in the, entire, um, in the entire project. Um, one of the things that you'll see variables called out through, throughout. Now, one of the things that we, we also do here, we got a little uh, funky. I had never seen anybody do it before. When you're building um, Linux and you have a Kickstart file, right? You got your, your, your um, Kickstart, uh, Kickstart file. Well, typically like a KS config or KS JSON, right? You, there's a lot of different variables and in information that you want to change in there. Well, Packer actually gives you ability to actually create template files and we can inject variables into that. And so by using the template, the, the template file option here, which I've never seen them used before, I'm actually able to create, say, take this KS template, uh, PK, uh, PKR template HCL file, right? And if you looked in here, you'll see like language is, guest OS language, the, the, the VM guest uh, keyboard layout, uh, build username, et cetera. I don't have to hard code any of that, which you typically typically see. Now I can actually pass that directly through directly through um, to to the build um, by using the template function here, which is really cool. And the other thing that we also added is by default, I mentioned that we default to HTTP. Well, not everyone has environments where they can use um, use HTTP for for building um, building these images, and so that's only the default configuration. We actually have the option for you to change this, and this is Stefan's brilliant idea, is to change it to disk. And if your image supports it, which I'm happy to say, 
all images now in this in, in this project support the disk space option. Uh, Photon was the last one to support it. If you want to change it to disk, it will use the option of using CD files or floppy content, which was a contribution that Stefan did to uh, the Packer plugin. We can now build those images without having to use HTTP. And that's literally just a change here in the common date and the common variables of changing this HTTP HTTP to disk, right? And that's all you have to do to change it. And it will it will immediately switch all builds over to use the disk, the disk base method, which is really, really super cool. And you can change a lot of things. Do you want to export to the library? What your name of your the library is, et cetera. A lot, it's, all of this is, is super, super uh, configurable. If I pop back over to uh, pop back over to uh, visual code here and pop this down so I can see a little bit. Pop over to Ter Terraform. I can see my, my deployment of uh, that Ubuntu image finished. And if I pop over here, I can see there's my cloud init, but look, there's the DNS, DNS name of hug, right? And it picked up the configurate the configuration uh, from my uh, from my met my metadata and user data, right? That I pushed to it. Which is pretty cool. So now I use Cloud that that image was built by Packer, right? Uh, a couple of days ago, I used Cloud Init through Terraform to deploy and just and just quickly quickly test it. Okay. Um, are there any questions thus far? Yes. Well, there is one question about the the content library first. So <laughs> is is the previous version of the template is is kept or not in the content library when you create a new version of the your image? Great question. It is it is not it is not kept. Um, VM only VM templates work that way, um, where you can check out and add multiple versions and keep those versions. This will actually do a replacement of the version. Yes. So that version, there's only one version kept, and it's the latest version. Okay. Oh, and second question: uh, When when having a native native Windows environment, do I need to deploy a Linux Ubuntu VM or to, to run the open source package projects. So, I'm not sure I understood the question. Sorry. So it, it, uh, if I understand well the question, it, 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 it ask if Packer is working on Windows. So Packer is working on Windows. And I don't know if you already, already tested the, your project on Windows. Oh, so I don't personally test it on Windows, but I know Alan, who I think is still on the call, has, has used it. And maybe Alan could even speak up and tell me if he's had success with Windows. Yeah. Yeah, it works works fine on Windows, and uh, Ubuntu is the other uh, the other system I use often now. But yep, uh, last I checked, it all still works on Windows. Cool, thank you, Alan. Alan happens to have, is also a contributor and has uh, has uses it in his environment. I won't say who he's with, but he's 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 had uh, we even have a call later today. So, <laughs> um, any okay. other questions, uh, mm -hmm. Stefan? There, no more question yet. Okay, so one of the things I want to show, and I think uh, if I look at the look at the attendee list, uh, there he is, I, Iburns, right? I, I'm not sure exactly how to say your name. I know you work for. I know who you work for. Um, <laughs> so if I go over here, I want to talk about uh, number twenty, which is one of the latest ones I put put in. So I'm going to pop in. Uh, say I want to do a number twenty, and I, this is probably not going to not going to finish while we're talking because I'm going to do a Windows 11 box, but uh, I'm going to do 20 and say, hey, I want to do a Windows 11 template. Yes. And go ahead and build that. Cool. Right. So it's going to start building, building this and building this for me. And what I want you to notice is there's a requirement um, for Windows 11 that folks may, may or may not know about. And that happens to be the virtual trusted platform module, which as of 1.7, of um, 1.7, uh, 1.7.9 of uh, Packer is now supported. So you don't have to do kind of like the, the reg registry hex and such. You can actually now um, just say uh, VTPM equal, equals true, which I'll show you that real, real quickly uh, over here in the code. Sorry, I just have to pop that so I can actually see what I'm doing here. So if we look over at Windows, and you can see how this is laid out with server and desktop, right? So if I pop over to this guy, I will look at my, my PK vars, and you'll notice down here I have a variable of VTPM, and I say true, and I did that two weeks ago, right? Um, if I look over into here, 
I can see that VTPM, so V uh, then capital TPM, just setting that variable, boom, done. Now, if I was using this for say VDI images, I would probably go in here and add like the, you know, the, the, the video card memory option as well, which I've not done it because, you know, I, I didn't have a need for it. Um, but you cannot, to you can totally, totally do that and totally customize this any way you want to, right? Um, this is really gives you a way to really kind of bootstrap and get started. Now, one thing you'll also notice is I mentioned the content library earlier. Um, I will call out that this does not send it to the content library, uh, will not send it to the content library. And is there anyone can tell me why I can't send it to the content library? Right. The, the, the hint is that um, OVF images can't have a VTPM. It's not supported to, to, to ship a, a, a VM with TPM over to the content library in OVF format. So if you look through the, when you look through the documentation here, I'll actually call, I'll actually call that out um, VTPM somewhere around here. Uh, Microsoft Windows image is not transferred to the content library. So that's the only, only slight difference is I just send that directly to a template. And while that's, while that's building, we'll pop over here and we can see that, you know, Windows is, is coming online, it's starting to build. Um, I, I do things like install Chocolatey. If you want to install additional apps, you can I install the Chocolatey package manager. I think that's kind of kind of cool to do so I can install additional apps. Um, I do a very similar thing with Windows uh, with uh, auto attend uh, XML files, which are, are notoriously painful. Um, what I do here is, is actually uh, convert, I can find it here. Um, yeah, auto attend XML file. I convert, I use a template, use a template here and I pass in build usernames, language, keyboard, the KMS key, you know, anything I need there. And those variables are defined right here in my PK var. So this is actually, you know, the general KMS key, general KMS key um, that you can find on the web anywhere. So I'm not sharing anything that's not just on the public internet here. This is a, the KMS key that I want to want to use. Um, you can you can use whatever key, you know, you have a retail key, et cetera. Um, I will note here, it has to be Windows 10 because there's not a Windows 11 in vSphere uh, ju just yet. Um, but anyway, there we go. Um, that's really what we, how, how, it, how it works here. Um, and we push that, push that down in there. But yeah, this is, this will save you a great amount of editing by using these, these, uh, by using these, um, these templates here, which I think is a really cool uh, addition to the, the project. Um, and then one of the things that I mentioned, you know, I showed a Terra Terraform example deploying that Ubuntu. One of the things that people always ask about is things like, you know, roles. Well, what's the minimum minimum roles I need? So we actually have I actually have Terraform plan in here that actually will walk through with the and provides the minimum privileges uh, needed in Packer um, to run pretty much every capability inside that Packer can do. These are the minimum privileges you need in, to, in order to do all of those capabilities. OK. Um, and one of the ways um, that this kind of carried for, forward, I mentioned Stefan had, had made some contributions to um, the Packer plugin, right? And I'm talking a little bit about open source for, for a moment here. If I pop over to um, the Packer vSphere plugin right here, right? Um, I'm, one, I'm a contributor, cont contributor here. You can be too in multiple different ways. Um, and the ways I'll actually sh show is like, you know, if you went to the, this documentation, I went all the way down to the bottom, right? Um, if you looked at, let's see if I can find it. Uh, there it is. Required vSphere privileges, right? Here's all the required vSphere privileges, right? Here's the, the steps in order, to con, in order to configure that. Well, this looks mighty familiar, right? Because the same information is provided here in my documentation. All the document I wrote that documentation actually took what I wrote here in the project and committed that to the Packer plugin and it was re reviewed by the HashiCorp team and included in the actual product product documentation. So I have a, a, a Terraform method to do it, but I also provide the UI method, but I contributed to that. It was one just one way to commit to open source. You know, Stefan, he put in, you know, some changes for like, um, uh, the floppy content, and I think a couple others uh, over, over um, very recently. Uh, skip export is an example of when Stefan did. So a lot of capabilities capabilities uh, built into this project. There's a there's still a lot of a, lot, a long way to go, right? We'll just pop over and still see that uh, that that Windows images is, is building real quick here. 
let's just kind of see where it is to so get to the point. Yeah. So it's, it's building. There's a lot, of, a lot of places where I want to go with this project. Um, I think it has a lot of opportunity. Um, I would love to see any uh, contributions, star it, share it. Uh, if you have ideas, I want to make contributions to it. It'd be wonderful to hear. We'd love to hear your ideas. Um, some people here have, have already committed. There's things that were, I would like to add um, support for building ARM-based uh, ARM VMs on, say, ESXi on Raspberry Pis, right? So some of the folks have these, these little guys sitting around, right? You can put um, ESXi on, um, on a Raspberry Pi. I would like to start building ways to build those those templates. I want to put in, you know, I want to finish off the work that I started with the Ansible piece and 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 convert a lot of the scripts over into using uh, the Ansible playbooks. Um, hint, 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 hint. There, uh, Alan. Um, I'd like to set up a runner um, to actually con constantly test these images. Um, in my last iteration of this project, um, I was very focused on doing some reorganization, some code cleanup um, and making this project better um, and, and simplify, simplifying as much as I could, but also um, taking use of things like um, a large percentage of the code was rewritten in this last release. And I added things such as um, a code quality uh, linter um, that went through, went through. And so whenever there's a pull request, um, the code is actually goes through um, the super linter and we'll look for any errors in Markdown, Ansible, Terraform, PowerShell, um, and, and others to see if there's any any known errors. And a lot of that, a lot of this was done in the last release just to make sure that the code was as as, as clean as possible. Um, but uh, if you go to the project, right, you want to use it. Um, I'm very detailed. Um, you'll you go here. You'll see the releases, right? If you have any issues, you can go and open up an issue, right? Choose an enhancement, choose a bug report, um, fill out the information with the drop downs. I, I use form based, uh, form based um, inputs. Uh, let me know if you um, want to do a pull request, right? Um, I just ask, you know, if you have a pull, do a pull request, put in an issue to map to it first, right? Um, that may help, helps make, have that conversation. In fact, you know, like Stefan and I, we have conversations over in the discussions, right? Use, you got an idea, you got a question, right? It's not quite, quite a bug. Let's have conversations over there. I do this in my free time, right? Uh, Stefan does a lot of this in, in, in his free time. Um, you know, uh, it's not a product, but it's an open source kind of, um, you know, kind of like just something we want to do and looking for people to help, help, help better this. And it's a great way to kind of get started in open source. This was for me. Um, this was the what spearheaded me getting involved in open source. Open source, uh, and it can help you too if you if you haven't haven't done so. Uh, in so far, you know, just kind of a you know kind of call it out. Um, I have to thank Stefan for this because you know he kind of got me. I started doing this project and got you know not not afraid to actually make contributions to other projects like I did with Packer. Um, and as of now, I'm one of the top contributors over on the on the Terraform provider for vSphere, and I'm now one of the maintainers. So it's kind of like, you know, you can do this too. Um, it just takes, you know, what effort you want to want to do to kind of get involved. Um, with that, I'm going to leave, you know, for any questions um, while the last image is building over here. Yes, there is one question related to the content library. So it's the yeah. continuing question uh, about, so since the previous version of the template is not kept, so it, it, that means that the Terraform will try to recreate the VM since the templates have changed. Ah, well, that is easy to fix. So uh, if I pop over into da, 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 here, uh, da, da, uh, pop over and switch this. That's where you have to get used to using uh, Get Smart and use the uh, ignore option. So I can go here and say clone ignore, right? I can say clone ignore, ignore my lifecycle changes. I could actually say clone dot. Uh, template UID and add that. So if this UID cha changes, um, it's not going to recreate it. So add that here. So if I change, if I if I go and change this here um, to you know uh, 2202, that's not going to. That, and then I rerun the plan because I have that in my lifecycle. Ignore changes. So ignore changes to the clone template. It's not going to re rebuild it. It's not going to force a new. Okay, great. That's a that's one of those little tweaks that you have to you wind up learning over time. You're going, 
oh no, what did I do? Right. And you have to <laughs> learn how to um, use that, use this life cycle argument, use, use this life cycle argument a lot. Um, there might be other things, you know, that you might want to ignore extra config, right? If extra config changes here, right. Um, then, then, it, then don't do a rebuild. Right. Um, you know, there's little thing, there's little things like um, a lot, I find a lot of people do this and actually I, I haven't done it here. Um, what I actually should have done down here on my disk, technically I should actually add a uh, data, um, data store uh, ID here. Um, oh yeah, I'm using Copilot. I don't know if anybody's used a uh, Copilot with, um, uh, with, um, github but it's pretty pretty nice um it's a new kind of feature but if i add this that means actually each disk is going to be placed with it if i don't set that and i didn't store storage vmotion it's not going to move the disk it's going to it only remove the move the vmx files so i would encourage people to to, to you know if you're using terraform just to be mindful of that anyway other questions there's a lot on the chat there no, no more question right now so um Again, if there's uh, anyone who wants to um, contribute, have a conversation, uh, share, share, share this, please, please do so. Um, the goal is to make this a, um, it's called Packer Examples for vSphere for a reason. It's an example, right? It's a starter kit. Um, it's not a, it's not a commercial product. It gets people a place to start, learn how to use Packer with vSphere hopefully learn new kind of features and tweaks and capabilities of either the plugin or packer right to show what the kind of the art of the possible is not just to keep it fair very bare, bare bones that's why i have like the ansible and terraform pieces to kind of show more infrastructure as code kind of being used together um the last thing i will i will also share just because it is also packer related and vmware and open source related there's also the the vmware fo pa uh, photon packer templates so if you ever have a need for to use photon and you want to use it with virtual box or a fusion or workstation there's also a repo that goes out here and creates creates these uh the, these um boxes for vagrant um these are actually found on vagrantup.com um the official images are uh, and it supports up to the latest version of uh, photon um not as, as robust we're not doing it for vSphere, but it's just another show another way of showing how to use um you know virtual box Pack, uh, virtual box packer fusion workstation um, uh, with with photon and then put that up as a as a vagrant um, vagrant box for fo folks as well so and you can find that on vmware the vmware github um, open source page so i hope it's been interesting um you know uh, if you guys have any questions ping me i'm happy to help thank you ryan for this great presentation um so now I have to share my screen to finalize this machine. Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes. So uh, the, the next event for this hug uh, will be to, tomorrow. Uh, we'll have Ashi, Ashi Talk Friends for the French speakers. So it is uh, friends of uh, Ashikorp uh, Toulouse that is doing so. So it's tomorrow morning. If you have, if you want to have a look, I will share with you the, the link to this uh, event in the in the message I will send you just after the, the, the session. And the the next is the Archi Talk for two, 2020, 2022. Uh, is on February the 17th. It's an international one, so it will be in English. So you can see it's a 24 hours uh, conference about Archicorp products. So uh, feel free to register and see what happened on, on, on the link I will share with you as well. And the next uh, meetup for the Luxembourg Hug uh, meetup will be on the next quarter. Uh, I will share with you the, the next date. And if you have uh, any topic regarding Archicorp that you would like to, to share with, with the group, uh, feel free to contact me and we'll see uh, how to, to manage it. So until then, stay uh, engaged with, with the rest of the community and use the Ashikorp uh, forum. It's discuss.ashikorp.com uh, if you want to discuss about the product. 
And thank you everyone for, for, for attending this meeting. And uh, if you want to, to stay connected, to continue to discuss, feel free to, to stay. And for those that will leave, uh, see, you, see, you, see you soon on, on the network if you want to continue to discuss with me or with Ryan. And so or, or see you on the next uh, meetup. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and this great. And thank you for joining. Thanks. Have Perth. a great evening. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.